Hi everyone, welcome back to Painted Studio. I'm Maury Curtis Dunbar, your <clears throat> hostess of many, many messes. So today we're gonna to be working on wooden bird houses. We at Painted carry many shapes. They come to you like this, raw wood. They'll need some sanding on the rough edges. And then they're able to be painted and foiled or put texture on or all kinds of stuff. We're gonna work on a Christmas birdhouse and we're using the most basic shape. So as you can see, I've already painted the roof line and the base on this and we used our Vivid Ultra Metallics Multi-Surface Acrylic Gloss in a poinsettia red. I thought that's perfectly appropriate for Christmas. And then we're gonna do the body with faux effects uh, Metal Glow Spruce Green. Now I need to shake this a little bit. I'll probably have to stir it even because, um, yeah, it's been sitting on the shelves and you can see all the mica has settled to the bottom. So I just got to pop this sucker open. I love when I have to do that. <laughs> it makes such a mess. Okay, got it open. I'm going to wipe my hand off on my apron so that I'm not wearing it. Pull my sleeves back. And I do need a little stir stick, so give me just a sec. I thought I had one sitting right next to me, but I didn't. So I wanna go in here, stir this up, get all that mica flake that's on the bottom stirred into here, because it'll make the green look better. Now, neither of these paints are exterior rated, so this is really going to be starting as an indoor decorative um, birdhouse. And yeah, I got paint all over me. Yay, I'm so proud of me. All right, so let's grab a brush. And we're gonna use a small brush today. We could use a bigger brush, but I'm not. I'm using the small brush because that's what's sitting next to me. And let's flip the camera down. Let's see if I can get a little more light on the subject. There we go. And I'm painting with the wood grain. Now the reason I'm going with this small brush is I, I need to get up into these little areas right up under the eaves. So it helps if I have a small brush, I have a little more control. I get a cleaner line. smeared. I didn't want to do that. So I got to be a little more careful coming down to the bottom. I was getting sloppy. And I paint the roof first. Um, because that's the way I like to do things. Because then once, even though I've painted this, I can roll the, everything around on its side and paint the fronts and sides. And uh, it won't affect this part of the paint because it's already been done. And this part has more complicated edges that I have to get up into. So it's easier to clean up if I have a little bleed over or something by using, um, by painting the body second. I don't care if my paint layer on this is perfect. I need 100% coverage, but the final look is going to be irrelevant because we're going to put foil on this. So let me get up under here, get that in there nice and cleanly. but I am putting specific colors under my foils because I'm going to be using red and green foils over the paint. So I wanna continue the red and green holiday theme on this from top to bottom. A 
probably should have some Christmas music playing in the background, but I don't. over here that need to be cleaned up and again I'm not too worried I could come back put a second coat clean that up on the red also we're gonna foil over it so it's not gonna be as critical if I get a little dot of green on the red or if I get a little red on the green but I want to I like to try to do my projects as neatly as possible although considering that my hands are gooey um, I'm, I'm failing on that right now I just want to get all of the wood sealed up so that when I put the foil adhesive on, um, it's not soaking into the wood, it's laying on top of paint. Okay, this is the last area to get done before we have to let this dry to put foil adhesive on it. done. Now you might hear sounds of kids in the background. We're on the street level and we have an ice cream place next to us that even in December is still busy full of kids because kids love ice cream. Quite frankly, so do I all year round. And it's wonderful because the kids come by and they love having their picture taken in front of our window because we're very Christmassy. Had tons of kids coming by our Halloween window and taking their pictures and their costumes with their families. It was so cute. Oh my gosh. Want to get the inside of the opening. Okay, let's turn it, see if I got everything. Okay, so now we are painted red and green and we have to sit for a while. All right, so our piece is now dry, but because we put paint on raw wood, the grain is slightly raised, making the surface rough. So we're just gonna lightly sand it. Didn't go crazy, just wanted to get that down. I have a piece of paper towel that just happens to be a little damp, and that's all I need to do to dust it. Uh, and then we're going to apply our Artsyville foil adhesive that I've poured off into a little plate. 
and uh, let this cure up. Oops, I almost forgot the bottom. Okay, and then we're gonna apply the Artsyville uh, foil adhesive to this and then let it cure up for an hour. Okay, so we've applied the foil adhesive all over the main green part body of our birdhouse and next we're going to foil. Now this can be a very broken application depending on if my adhesive absorbed into the body of the birdhouse at all, but I'm okay with that because depending on how it results, the broken look could look very cool or I just apply another layer of foil adhesive and go at it again. So I'm gonna to have to place this in strange ways on the front of this to get this to fit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is fit it all the way down here to the edge. And I'm gonna kind of work, see if I can work it up around a little bit that the, the bird perch up here. Let me get my heavier scrubber brush out. I just want to get as much of this release as possible on here. And we'll peel back. Oh, we got a good release. Nice. Okay, then I'm going to stick this up in here. And work it down around the sides. Honestly, this is the hardest part of the whole thing to put the foil on because it's got the bird stand in here, the bird perch, and that's what makes it a little awkward. So if I don't like how this is, even though it's still sticky here, I can probably get some more foil release on there. If I don't like this, I'll put another layer of adhesive on it. But it's looking pretty darn good. We're a little patchy right up here. So like I said, I might wanna come back in here and put another layer on that, specifically because it's the front of the birdhouse and that's what everybody sees the most. Let's get my toothbrush up under there and then get my finger up in there. I got a little thin spot right there. there. So the, the thing that can happen sometimes if you foil twice over uh, one layer of adhesive is in the scrubbing you can get some dull spots. So like I said, if I don't like it, I just come back and do a second layer of adhesive. I think that is actually a, a better solution. I get a better result instead of trying to force a perfect release on one pass, especially when I'm working with a kind of a coarse surface like this is. I'm gonna need some more foil. No surprise there.
So I'm probably going to put another layer of foil adhesive over this whole thing because I just... It's such a porous piece of wood. I'm not loving every result. Some foils um, will release a little more opaquely on a coarse surface. This one doesn't. I can't tell you which ones do and which ones don't. You just know it when you're using them. Oh, that gave a really good release with the exception of a few spots that I probably didn't even burnish the foil on. Probably a little heavier handed with the foil adhesive over here. Okay, so you can see where we're going. It's time to put this in fast forward so I can put foil adhesive on this again and then we'll release foil on it again. Then we're gonna put foil adhesive on this and I'll come back when it's time to work on the roof. Okay, so we have foiled the whole body of this. I did a second foiling on it because I wanted a more opaque, solidly foiled look. And now I've put my foil adhesive on the roof, on the stand, and on the base. The only thing I haven't done is the bottom, which clearly I can't do. I have to have some place to set this down. We're going to start foiling the roof. I'm going to determine if I want to do a second layer of foil on here as it goes. I may, I may not. Who knows? Because I have some other ideas of what to do if I don't think I've got a, a solid enough release on here. Okay, so we're going to take this and put it slightly over the edges so that I can get this edge here. And this edge along here. I might even do this edge on this side because uh, my sticky plate is grabbing. But I want to make sure I have, you know, I take advantage of the fact that I've got this big piece of foil and get as many of edges and stuff as I can. Makes the, makes the job a little easier. All right, so let's take our brush, brush the foil. Turn this towards me. I'm getting pretty good release. Let me just put it back down and give it a little more scrub. That looks pretty good. I just need to get that spot right there. Not happy with that particular spot. I think I'm going to take my softer brush because I'm going to try to avoid scuffing up the foil that I've already released. And there we go. Looks good. Let's get this other side. And this time I'm holding it towards me so I can actually see it a little better. Uh, that helps me out. Where's my brush? I lose things. I keep losing things under the foil. holding on carefully because I don't want to stick my fingers in the middle of foil adhesive and dull the adhesive properties. If I can avoid it, usually I can. Now on these edges, I kind of like to take my thumbnail and go up and down them or if you don't have <laughs> acrylic nails like I do, um, use a spoon or something else that'll give you kind of a 
a nice bit of an edge to work on. Now you can see my everything's sticky here because this is where I had this originally that I was painting it, so it's wanting to fight me. Okay, I'm going to take my foil right over there, run up and down it with my fingernail. There we go. I got this side as well. Okay, now I'm going to get the edges first of the base so that I have something that I can rest this on where it won't stick to everything. Okay, so now I can get this front part. I can wrap up around in here. I need to be able to make it so I could lay it down just a little bit. Oh, that came out nicely. I gotta get my little bird stand here. First, let's get the end. And then we're going to take a little piece here and I'm just gonna clip a little piece because this will be easier than trying to deal with this whole big piece. Take a little piece, wrap it around the stand. a little rub and I've metalized the stand now with the foil. I'm gonna turn this this way, get this edge. Right, now I've got to get the top edge is in here, and then I need to get up under here. So now we've got all of this done, this lower area done. Now down here, I'm gonna tell you, the release is far from perfect, but I have more things that we're going to be doing to this. And I missed this edge. How did I miss this edge? Cause I gotta miss at least one thing once a day. There we go. All right, let's get under here, make sure this is done. get under here and make sure this is done. Yep. Keep setting it down on sticky spots so it's just <laughs> depositing a little extra foil adhesive on there that I want to make sure doesn't ruin anything. So I'm going to take that piece and set it to the side. Some, some lucky person will get that in their package and they'll have some scraps of red to play with and test. are so dull I need to get my sharpener out and sharpen them that's what I've they used to be my ultra sharp scissors and then I've used them too much so now they're my ultra dull scissors all right so I'm going up under here again I'm kind of using my fingernail to help release things I don't expect a perfect release up here I just want it enough red in there to complete the look here. Up and 
Again, I don't worry about it being perfect under here, but I do want that foil to complete the way it looks, give a little bit of nice reflection when you're looking at it from other angles. Let's get this under here. Last under the last eve to do this. This is so cute. Okay. So now we're done with all the foil. I don't need to do a second foil run on the roof. It released beautifully. Uh, the foil was, the wood was a little better, more smoothly sanded on the roof than it was on the body. But I do need to kind of do something here because it's a little sticky. Now, I could top coat this, but we're going to take my favorite solution. Hang on just a sec because it's just out of my reach. We're going to take a little clear polyester glitter. Not glass, polyester because it's lighter. Now this is some of my own stock that I poured into an old Martha Stewart uh, shaker because I need to be able to shake like I'm doing several on a lot of projects. So I just poured out a whole jar and put it in an old Martha Stewart shaker. So I happen to love this look because it looks, um, it only grabs where there's little breaks in the foil and it looks like it's iced, like it's got a little bit of an ice dusting on it. Okay, so up close now you can see where the gl glitter grabs on the roof and on the base, and look how cute that is. All right, so this one is ready to go for holiday decor. You could get a little uh, artificial cardinal, park it up here, tie a little holly right up here, make a little mistletoe if you wanted to, or you could just leave it as is. Look how darling. I'm so pleased with this. All right, thanks for sticking around while I did this whole thing. Um, you'll see that it's been stitched together. I did it over the course of today. So it's a fun video. You can see it all step by step, completely done. And yeah, look how cute. Oh, I'm in love. All right, everyone, have a great evening.